Ich bin schon dieser Wolltisplusse, ich habe mich bestens jetzt. Oh Gott, ich habe das gut oder. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I would like to really uh, more and more share different realizations I have with association with Guru Maharaj, with uh, serving him as well. And uh, I would like to share with you all, all, all of you and all the all the people that are listening to the classes as I hope it will be useful to you ask me. Before I start reading it, I would just ask you one question because this, today's topic is surrender. And how much are we surrendered? How much do you surrender? How much do you think that you are surrendered? From like zero to hundred, is it ten, twenty percent, thirty percent? How much we think we are surrendered? And what would happen if we surrender more? Will it be harder for us? Will it be like harder for us in life, or will it be easier for us in life? Just to think about. It. Will it be harder or easier? If we surrender more, will it actually be easier for us? So was the was the so is there any reason why we are not trying? Because we always hear in the Shastra, always hear like we always hear about this surrender, surrender, surrender. You have to surrender to Krishna, surrender more, surrender more, even more, even more. So it is speaking about that surrender is not on off switch. It's something that is developing, like all the aspects of devotion life, it's not on off. It's like different levels of it, different capacities of it. So we're gonna, and we're gonna see deeply more what surrender is, and then we are gonna focus on one aspect of surrender. And that's why we were going to read the CC Madhya Lila 100. So I will just read it out. Uh, we will just start with the prayers. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda So Anu Anukulyasya Sakalpa Pratikulyasya Varjanam Shishyati Vishwaso Gopritve Varanam Tata Atmanik Shepaka Panya Sadvida Sharanagati. I think it's like different different melody, but anyway, we just go. Okay. Yes. The six divisions of surrender are the acceptance of those things favorable to devotional service, the rejection of unfavorable things, the conviction that Krishna will give protection, the acceptance of the Lord as one guardian or master, full self-surrender, and humility. Perfect. That is divine grace. One who is fully surrendered in quality uh, is qualified qualified with the six following characteristics. One, the devotee has to accept everything that is favorable for the rendering of transcendental loving service to the Lord. Two, he must reject everything unfavorable to the Lord's service. This is also called renunciation. Interesting. Three, all devotee, oh sorry, our devotee must be firmly convinced that Krishna will give him protection. No one else can actually give one protection. And being firmly convinced of this is called faith. This kind of faith is different from the faith of any personalist who want to merge into the Brahman effulgence in order to benefit by cessation of repeated birth and death. A devotee wants to remain always in the Lord's service. In this way, Krishna is merciful to his devotees and gives him all protection from the dangers found on the path of Four, the devotee should accept Krishna as his supreme maintainer and master. He should not think that he is being protected by a demigod. He should depend only on Krishna, considering him the only protector. The devotee must be firmly convinced that within the three worlds, he has no protector or maintainer other than Krishna. Now, five, self-surrender means remembering one's activities and desires are not independent. We're going to focus on this one. Self-surrender means remembering that 
One's activities and desires are not independent. The devotee is completely dependent on Krishna, and he acts and thinks as Krishna desires. Six, the devotee is meek and humble. Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita 15:15, Sarvasya chaham kridi sanivishto mata spritir janan apohanam cha vedaisha sarvair aham eva vedyo vedan sakrit vedavid eva chaham. I am seated in everyone's heart and may come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. Similarly, in everyone's heart, Krishna deals differently according to the living entity's position. The living entity position is to under the protection of the illusionary energy or under Krishna's personal protection. Let me do this again. The living entity's position is to be under the protection of the illusionary energy or under Krishna's personal protection. When a living entity is fully surrendered, he is under the direct protection of Krishna, and Krishna gives him all intelligence by which he can advance his spiritual realization. The non devotee, however, being under the protection of the illusionary energy, increasingly forgets his relationship with Krishna. Sometimes it is asked how Krishna calls want to forget. Krishna personally caused his devotees to forget material activities and through the agency of Maya, Krishna caused the non-devotee to forget his devotional service to the Lord. This is called Apokha. Can we go again to the verse, please? Thank you. The sixth division of surrender are the acceptance of those things favorable to devotional service, the rejection of unfavorable things, the conviction that Krishna will give protection, the, the acceptance of the Lord as one guardian or master, full self surrender, and Andeham-shri-guru-shri-uta-pala-kamalam-shri-guru-vaishnam-shri-upam-sagra-jatam-sagra-gana-raguna-tan-vitam-tam-sajivam-sadvetam-savadutam-parjanam-sakitam-krish
There is always a question when we get to speak about surrendering to someone. The question comes like, what am I surrendering? Am I surrendering my free will? Am I surrendering my independence? Isn't the free will the essence of a soul? Isn't the essence of life, the essence of, of actually existence? means that we have some independence. And isn't the love, the basis of love actually, based on free will? So then the question is, what we are actually surrendering to? Many times we can, we can maybe be afraid of this surrender because okay, we had a bad experience surrendering to some materialistic people. And now maybe we kind of doubt that, okay, you know, maybe just surrendering all itself can be wrong. But we have to understand the difference between expression, expressing ourselves, and making our own decision. We as a soul have a free will. We as a soul, if we have dependence. But the thing that Krishna wants us to give up is not our way of expressing us. He wants to give up, he wants us to give up these thoughts that we can make our own decisions. Oh, that's an interesting statement. Let's go deeper into it. Do you remember when you were a child? How does a child act? Does child have to decide some big decisions? No, child doesn't have to make big decisions. Does the child have to be in fear what will happen in the future? Well, maybe we try that we don't put them in such a position, right? Does a child is stressful? You know, will the bills be paid or something? No. The child only business is to follow the father and mother to follow whatever they say, to express himself in the decisions your parents, parents make, and to be blissful and happy. And such an Anderson say, say that actually we advance more as more we are feeling like a child. Because <clears throat> for a child, we are spiritual child, we're spiritual children, we are actually even, you know, we are even material children <laughs> actually at some point. Some, some way. Guru and Krishna has the best vision what is best for us. And not only that they have the best vision what is best for us, but they empower the decision. They empower the instruction they give to us. So it's not only that it is the best, it's actually even more empowered. Okay? So we see that following Guru and Krishna, you will see. Just a second, just a second. Think about this. Do you hear me? Yes, Prabhuji, we can hear you. So what we are trying, I will try to whisper more. Do you hear me now? If I whisper? Yes, Prabhu, we can hear you. Okay. So the thing is that we are trying to come to a decision. We are following Guru and Krishna. We are following Guru and Krishna. We are not making our independent choices. Our independent choices brought us to the position that we are entangled in material. And let's just elaborate. So following Krishna and Guru means that they make decisions for us. They make decisions for us. And that we express and figure out how to do the decision. See the difference? So, so when we are saying that we are surrendering to something, we are not surrendering, you know, we are, it's like if you are serving the spiritual master, 
you are surrendering your free will what you're going to do what you got but when he gives you an instruction you give your whole intelligence your whole capacities and skills to perform how to do it, how to perform that this is where expression comes from our free will to follow the instruction follow the the, the the desire of this pure soul and of krishna and expressing ourselves as a child to facilitate everyone you see the difference so then we focus on the details and in details devotion is evoked so we are not doing it like 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 no heartedly I don't know, like heartedless heartless you know it's like you know go and you know please go and bring me this oh i have to bring you this okay <laughs> no it's like okay let me do it let me bring it you know bring me a bag and you go and you just you know take any bag you know like any bag just like you know oh, like I just took any bag, you bring it back, and it's like, oh, it's a dirty bag. Why do you bring me a dirty bag? It's like a really ugly, dirty bag. You know, I need to have the books that you want to be put books inside. You know, <laughs> so it's like, uh oh. So, spiritual master tells you, go and get the bag. So, and then we are trying to use all our intelligence. Okay, he needs a bag. You're speaking about the books. You want to put the books inside. Okay, you know, let me go and get a paper bag. Something that would be nice to have, like maybe easy, nice to carry. Maybe a, maybe a, cotton bag something nice and so the in details krishna is in the details and our devotion is expressed through the details of facilitating the desire of the spiritual master and we keep, have to do this repeatedly until the end of our material life until the end of our life this life until the you know as much as the until the end of our material existence we have to do this because interestingly enough, my dear devotees, we are going to do the same thing in the spiritual world. I don't know that you ever heard that in the spiritual world, people like devotees there are acting independently. No. Who is deciding the activities of that day? Two CEOs. Maharaj is speaking really often lately about that. Purnamasi, Vrindadev. Purnamasi is like making the like. She's like, is a, she's studying all these pastimes. Brinda Devi is facilitating it. So each person in the spiritual world, he gets a script what he has to do that day for Krishna. You know, when Jatila needs to kind of, a, you know, start chasing Krishna around, when she has to appear and break the, the you know, the, you know, the moment Krishna and Radha should kind of meet and, you know, Jatila comes and breaks it out. You know, it's not phantom. Not random it's guided it's guided and then they express themselves fully to enhance their pastimes. is at least so we are always guided we are not independent in the spiritual world so why are we trying to be independent in our devotional life why are we trying to be independent in our even material life because being independent in material life makes all the problem for us so so that's why we don't like to surrender to someone and we would like to surrender more because it's really hard to follow our material life but it is because we are trying to make it dependent you know because the independent uh, things we the decisions we made made it difficult <laughs> you know so the more we surrender then you will see how much krishna is actually maintaining you actually protecting you, and actually giving you all the facilities because you're following his instructions and we can see many devotees even in our movement they have no mental physical material financial no problem whatsoever the ones who are actually surrendered to krishna or if they have they see it as a purification for krishna so they're not disturbed really nice if you go to the verse uh, bhagavad gita 1859 can you go please to that verse 1858, sorry, 58. Thank you. Matchitam Sarva Durgani, Mat Prasada Tarishati, Atachetvam Ahankaran, Nashroshyasi Vinan. 
If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, it means independently, not hearing me, you will be lost. Don't we feel like that, isn't it? Oh my God, it's like I got into trouble. Okay, I'm lost again. Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, let's go to, go to the purpose. The purpose is really interesting. A person in full Krishna consciousness is uh, not unduly ex anxious about executing the duty of his existence. You see, when we follow the follow the instructions of Guru Maharaj and, and Krishna, and we just do not use our independence to make our decisions, but we just do our independence to act upon the destructions, there is no anxiety. The foolish cannot understand this great freedom from all anxiety. For one who acts in Krishna consciousness, Lord Krishna becomes the most intimate friend. He always looks after his friend's comfort, protector, maintainer. And he gives himself to his friends, who is devotedly engaged, working 24 hours a day for pleasing the Lord. So when we get, so when we get Krishna's plan, and we are actually working on executing Krishna's plans, we are actually doing 24 hours service to him. Therefore, no one should be carried away by the false ego of the bodily concept of life. This is the reason why we make our own decisions. This is why we think that we know better because of the false ego, because of identifying with the body and the past impressions and such things. But remember, Krishna and Guru sees better than us. And not only they see better, they also empower it. One should not falsely think himself independent but the, of the laws of material nature or free to act. He is already under strict material laws, but as soon as he acts in Krishna consciousness, he is liberated, free from the material complexities. One should not note very carefully that one who is not active in Krishna consciousness is losing himself in material willpower. So making our decisions and following them, it is, it is the ocean of birth and death. No conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done. But the person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free from to act because everything is pre uh, prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by spiritual master. Thank you very much for this verse. So, so many points. I just want you to focus. The problem about our plans, the problem about our plans, Guru, Guru, I have, like, I, I did the same thing. Krishna, Krishna, um, Chandra Bala Swami, my good spiritual master, I have a plan. I'm going to do this and this. I'm going to do preaching like this and this. It's like, it's like seemingly like Krishna conscious thing. You know, I'm going to do preaching. I'm going to do, going to do preaching like this and this. And he's like, you know, he sees the time like you know, stubborn. So he can, okay, just do it there. The thing is that it's not the best thing. Even though it is like seemingly Krishna conscious, but it is not the plan of Krishna. This is not place, time, place, and circumstances. It was not, it was not totally considered by time, place, and circumstances. And it was not empowered by Krishna. So what's the point of that preaching if it's not empowered by Krishna? What, what are you going to preach? Your selfishness. You know, you know, you're just going to promote yourself, actually. Even though you're speaking about Krishna, you're promoting yourself. Think about our plans is that we become attached to the plans because we're constantly thinking it's uh, my plan. And then I'm thinking what I want in this plan. It's actually we are mindful of ourselves. In our plans, we are mindful of ourselves. Or our extended self. But we, when we follow Krishna's plan, then we are mindful of Krishna. Because we are doing this for her. If you're cooking for someone, and you want to cook what this person likes, then you're mindful of that person because you're not thinking like, oh, what I want to put now. No, 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 what this person would like. You're constantly thinking what this person would like in this meal or in this project. How would the Maharaj would like to do this? How would Krishna like this? So you're constantly mindful of Krishna because you're doing this for Krishna. And mindful of Krishna means Krishna conscious. <clears throat> Know how to get out of this 
So Krishna knows how we can get out of this complex situation we are. And that's why we have, he gives us special instructions that we have to kind of follow it with, plus, with love and trust. Follow the guidance. Because we are like a blind mouse. We are spiritually blind mouse in a big maze of Maya. And we are trying to make our own way out. Do not try it. Do not even try it. It's just impossible. We are following the instructions. We are standing ourselves. We are, we are using our intelligence and the determination, enthusiasm. And little by little, we are like, you know, like small instruction by small instructions to big instructions. So we can start to trust this guidance and actually be guided out of this space as a, as a blind mouse. I want to end up here with a practical example. Practical example. Are you ready? Are you ready, guys? So far, so good? Everybody fall asleep or everybody is wide awake. So example, you are a personal servant of spiritual master. And for a few days, you were bringing spiritual master flowers for his altar. Okay. So, and yesterday, today, so the, the day before this day, he asked you to put the flowers on the altar yourself. So the, my question is, Today, will you decorate the altar by yourself? Yes or no? So just think about yourself. What would your answer be? So today, you would like to also offer this offering to him. So will you go and just try to, try to, to decorate the altar with the Okay, think about it. Now, the second example. And then we're going to go through them. Person, person, one person is every one or second day, like one, like one or two days, picking up laundry from Maharaj and he's cleaning. And one day, this same person asks you to bring the clothes to the program. Maharaj's clothes, washing to the program. Would you do that? Would you do that? Would you take the clothes to the Maharaj and bring it to the person who is usually so why am I asking you this? Because I had a similar situation. So now I would like anyone, if they want to, tell me their answers. For example, one and example two. Anyone? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, that was a wonderful practical example. Uh, thank you very much for asking this and making the session more interactive. So, um, shall we um, request the devotees, Prabhuji, to turn on the cameras? And, yeah, and yes, please. Okay, so dear devotees, um, it would be nice if you can turn on your cameras, if you can, um, and then we can make this session from promoting even more practical with deep lessons to learn. Thank you very much. So who would like to try it? Who would like to who would like to try to answer it? Okay. Uh, Please go ahead. Yeah, hi Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Sorry, first question is when you take the Guru Maharaj ask a question, a flower to offer in the altar. So you're going to decorate by yourself or what you're going to, that's the question, Prabhu? Yes. So yesterday you, he, he said, just, he said, told you, okay, you know, why are you giving me the flowers? You, you put it on the altar. So today, would you decorate the altar? You have some extra flowers, you have to use them. Will you decorate the uh, no, we're going to just follow Guru Maharaj's instructions. Just put the flower. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Anyone else has something different? Shilpeth, what would you say? Uh, same, I wouldn't do it because even though Maharaj allowed you one day, I would wait for his instructions for the other days. 
okay? And then what about the, the clothes, clothes for Mahalaj? Uh, can you repeat that question for the clothes? Because I didn't quite get it. So that person who is taking clothes every one or two days for Maharaj to clean. And now this person texts you, please, to the, tonight for the program, bring the clothes. Bring the clothes, your clothes for washing. Bring it, bring it with you. So that I don't have to come. So would you do it? Because that person's asking me, then I would this service. Okay, perfect. Anyone else has a different, maybe, thoughts about that? Dinanath Prabhu, maybe <laughs> I would like to hear your sharpness. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, what do you say? I would say that it would be not appropriate to do it that way, to bring it to the program. However, you have to be intelligent and look at the situations because the, at the end, the clothes needs to be ironed and the service needs to be done because he will not, Maharaj will not have the clothes. So you have to, if somebody would ask me, then I would say, uh, I would state the preference. I would explain him why it's not appropriate. However, if, and, but however, if it's not possible for that person to do it, then I would then recommend that we still can do it, but do it in a very discreet way uh, so yeah. that it's not sort of done openly and it's kind of done discreetly uh, outside the house. Maybe you transfer it from car to car and just make sure that it's, it's done discreetly. So that's how I would. Okay, so you will, you will bring it. If you will just discreetly bring it. Then. If I it's guess. not possible for the devotee to, to actually bring follow the normal routine, yes. Okay. So interesting, it's uh, different situations. Every day you will have one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Will... please uh, share your realizations, thoughts, or guidance from Maharaj. Well, well, this is like one thing that he kind of uh, he wanted to make me uh, aware because you know we hear about four levels of personal servants, right? Like like servants. The the last the, the fourth level is um, you uh, you get an order but you do not manage to do it. You don't do it. The third one is, you know, he has to be ordered what to do. The second one, he already, he already kind of uh, intuitively knows what he has to do. And the first class is like, you know, he doesn't have to think about anything. It just happens. So, so you know, you would be, we would maybe think like, oh, yes, let us be the first class. You know, let me do what Maharaj, like, you know, let me predict what Maharaj wants and then I will do that. The thing is that we do not become the first class. We do not become the second class, first class, that we kind of already intuitively know what Maharaj knows by mental speculation, which means by, I think that this Maharaj was like, I think Maharaj wanted this. We get to that point by training, by actually he guiding us, he telling us what to do, what not to do. In these two examples, Maharaj didn't tell didn't tell me to to offer flowers. And Maharaj didn't tell me to take the laundry. He didn't approve me to taking the laundry, even though that person is doing this service for him. And Maharaj is directly speaking with him. But he didn't tell me that I take this. Why? Because Maharaj had some other plans. Maharaj had some other plans. So until we come to the level that we are so much trained, and that's why personal servant, servant, he has to be trained for like years and years, understanding the mood, you know, exactly, you know, when you can approach him, when you should approach it, when you should give more of time, when you should leave him alone, to actually understand the mood of Maharaj and approach him accordingly and know what he's like, almost like, you know, reading his mind. Until then, we just have to follow the order, follow the order. In these cases, you will be heavily chastised. You'll be able to chastise because Maharaj has a system of decorating altar in the, like in this in like in, in this in this example. Say. He has a specific way. Even though he yesterday told you to put the flowers, but he didn't, as as Devani said, he didn't tell you to put the flowers, to decorate the altar. Even though we were thinking like, oh yes, yesterday we're doing, let's do it again. No. If Maharaj would tell you an instruction every day, decorate altar in this in this way, then it is following his instructions, right? So, and then if, if let's say next time, okay, you started to decorate the altar in a specific way, you, you were trained, you will educate how to decorate the altar. Maybe next time you come to serve him, then he will, maybe he will, he will again 
tell you, okay, please continue on decorating the altar. But you got instructions from him. And then it's like you can assume that every day you can decorate the altar, isn't it? Because the instruction is there. But because he didn't give you an instruction, he didn't, he didn't think that he will decorate the altar or he didn't think that he will take the, the laundry because he had some other, other reasons. He had some other intentions for this laundry. He wanted to put some more laundry. He wanted to, to do something else. And you already took the laundry and gave it to other to Prabhu. And he's like, where's the laundry? You rascal. <laughs> you know, I have to adjust to you now. I have to adjust to your, your mental speculation. Heavy, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's a subtle difference. So the one thing that I've really learned from this and the reason why, you know, the reason why, like, uh, it is really important for the brahmacharis, sure. And, but it's also like useful for like all the instructions which gives is that getting the instruction of Maharaj and following his instructions, you are in the safe zone. And this actually taught me that I am still very much dependent. I'm still making independent decisions. Really much, I'm still making lots of dependent decisions. And not asking Maharaj for guidance, not ask, asking Maharaj how to do like, if, like how to do the service, how to serve Krishna in different ways. And then it kind of starts to make, make me understand how much I am still <clears throat> I'm still kind of making my own decisions. And of course, as a brahmachari, you know, you you don't you your decision, your, your kind of a your kind of a mindset is to follow orders. You don't have your own independence because you're like but I really want to experience this. I really want to experience this, that I have one person who is guiding me constantly and I'm just trying all my mental, mental activities and engagement and all my creativity just to go and serve destruction, serve destruction. So in these examples, in these examples, it shows us the subtle form of like a really, 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 really kind of a, a and examples where it seems like we know what we should do, but because we didn't get an instruction, there is a chance that we are doing something wrong. Especially like maybe it, like in personal service, service it's like a little like more personal, a little, a little more delicate. Yeah. Any comments, questions? Reflections. Thank you very much for this uh, topic. Uh, it was quite deep. Uh, so we'll open up for Q and A. Um, if there's any questions, comments, realizations? Please go ahead and post your questions. Ask uh, one to one, or I can read it on your behalf. Thank you, Silpesh Prabhu. Straight away. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Risha Prabhu. Hare Krishna, everyone. All glories to Guru Maharaj, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Just wanted to ask, maybe you could tell us a bit more about your experiences of serving Guru Maharaj. Like, is there a lot of fun involved? Do you get chastised? How do you take things, you know? So how long have you been doing this service as well? I was, I, when Janaki Nath left the world, then Maharaj came and then he was staying here on land for one month. So I was serving him then. And then I was, I went to Croatia and then in few more, few more uh, instances, I, I went for service for one month. So I was kind of a serving him for like a few months a year. And uh, one thing that uh, I was missing a training from some, somebody to train me up how to be a personal servant because it is uh you're actually adjusting yourself to a like a, like full like a person to a living person which is uh, you're getting to know him as uh, you're trying to get to know him but not to be too close to him in the sense not to be familiar with him and, and also like you know they say that one of the things that the disciples should be friendly towards spiritual master but not friends to spiritual master, friendly. And uh, that means that you, you're like, just to be relaxed. <laughs> relaxed. Maharaj likes that you're relaxed. 
but if you mess up, you have to be like, you know, and he, when he's like serious, you have to be serious as well, you know, if you start making jokes when he's serious. <laughs> so it's really, it's really, it's really, it's really nice service to be so close to him, to, to, to see him act, how he's constantly engaged, and he's constantly thinking about his disciples, he's constantly communicating with them, calling them, taking care of them. He's taking really uh, a personal approach to each disciple. And uh, he really takes, takes care of and thinks about, you know, oh, did I call this person? Did I send this email to this person? He will have to be ready to, to you know, drop everything what you're doing at, at that moment and go there and do whatever he says. <laughs> but Mahatma Prabhu, he told me that the personal servant uh, needs to take care of himself. Because like serving a spiritual master or like, okay, maybe you can transcend this for one week, but if you're serving it longer, you just have to kind of take for rest if you need. You know, you know, sometimes you're just curving up to take a shot and you know, so it's not good as well as too if you want to, uh, you don't, you don't manage, you don't, you, you like after like heating up and, and setting up for his meal, you don't just don't have a, like, you don't just don't want to spend time to now heat your, heat it for yourself, you know? <laughs> Let's see it as it is, yeah. You know? So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of, you're sharing the troubles of being a spiritual master with, and be a preacher with a spiritual master. And, he, and for brahmacharis, is the best. For brahmacharis, being with spiritual master is the best because you're learning how to be renounced. He's chested as you, he can have you on his eye and he can see like, oh my God, it's like, this is my disciple. Oh no. Yeah, it's like, and he can tell you personally, like, you're you a rascal, you're you know, doing this wrong, this wrong, you're constantly doing the same mistake. So, and, and, and especially he said once that a personal servant, he has to be really strict with personal servant because personal servant can't influence, he can mess up, uh, he can influence uh, sadhana, spiritual master. I mean, I guess not in a like, spiritual level, but maybe if you're just making it hard for him, maybe he's just using too much energy on it. And the point is that the, 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 the servant has to exactly follow his instructions because he knows exactly why he said it. He's not going to disclose your, his mind to you, you know, telling you why he decided. You say, like, you do this, do this like this, you have to do it, you don't, like, you, like, you have to do it exactly as he says, and 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 maybe just tell him sometimes like I'm not sure about this. How can I maybe go with this if I'm not sure? So this is like one thing that I really learned this time when I was here around is I get instruction from him, and I may ask a question and I ask a question if I'm not sure how to facilitate it, and then you just go and do it. I don't know, is there any specific thing you would like to know? Uh, no, that's, that's really helpful. That's really interesting. And uh, yes, I, I'm really happy to hear how personal marriage is with everyone. I mean, that, that's really reassuring because, uh, you know, that, that's my approach. I like to be personal with people as well. Mm. Yeah, it's really, it's really good to hear your, well, hear your experiences. I had just really personal with your husband. He's really kind of a, he really like yeah. He really like he. he I, I I kind of considered it for him. It, it's like everything about Vaishnava relationships. You know, always giving gifts, accepting gifts, you know, opening the mind. You know, so it's like just wonderful how much he kind of really has this loving relationship and personal relationship with each each individual. And for him, it's like you know, he's making a, like for us. It's like for Kishori and me, we are just arranging this table of you know you know. Uh, everybody wants to invite him for lunch, for a program, and this and that, and he wants to really like kind of accommodate all of it. So it's like, and then Haridas also has to have his his meal done. So we are just kind of trying to facilitate all of it and let him make the decision. So one of the things that we, we like the first, like in the beginning, we were like, okay, we will just make a decision for him, Maharaj, to make it easier for him. Oh. No. No, no, no. Maharaj gives all decisions. You give him all the options. He tells you what to do, and then you facilitate. 
you know, maybe in the, some more advanced level when you're actually a pure Vaishnava, then you, maybe you can actually understand a pure Vaishnava in the ways. Like you, you cannot make decisions because you, you cannot make decisions. But it's a tricky, it's tricky. Because we have these tendencies, you know. It's like, you know, for a child, you make a decision for your child. You don't kind of, <laughs> yeah, so, but for, for a senior, like you're serving someone, he makes all the decisions. Thank you, Professor. It's really interesting insight that we wouldn't normally have been asked. So, really, really happy to hear this. Thank you. Yeah, he doesn't push so much Grihastas, you know. He said he doesn't. Um, he's not expecting Grihastas to be like surrendered, like Brahmacharis or something. So that's why I had a big difficulty to understand these levels because I was like, you know, I didn't. I was not aware that I'm in a different ashram and different situation, different position that, you know, that I'm serving him and that he has to have, have to be like much more stricter with me uh, in this sense. And I'm also learning, I'm train, being trained. So I was thinking like, oh, when will Maharaj, you know, not be so strict with me? But, you know, you're Brahmachari, he should always be strict with you. But then you like, when you hear that, you know, uh, with the other devotees, he kind of uh, expresses his gratefulness for your service and everything. Of course, he has also, he expresses it to you after a while, after like, you know, after maybe one month, he kind of expresses it, you know, because he knows that, you know, you have to be strict with your students because then they are actually endeavoring. So that's why sometimes they're like, you know, if I just mentioned something, you know, okay, what he mentioned, you know, he likes this about you. Okay, then I will, I will try to do this more better for him. And, you know, I will never hear it from him. I will just try to, you know, you know, <laughs> try to hear from other devotees what Maharaj appreciated so I can try to do more of this. And, and I come to Maharaj, sometimes I come to Maharaj, Maharaj, was my behavior okay? You know, oh, not exactly this and that, this is not okay, this is not okay. And okay, okay, Maharaj, I will try that, not to do it. You know, <laughs> learn it from this. Yeah. Raj Prabhu, what do you say? Very interesting, Prabhu. Thank you very much. How do you know where the line is for okay, you're not you're not supposed to make any decisions, but how do you know where the line is when you should just use your initiative on things? Because some things are like very small things. Well, they may seem very small, but he may want it. He want may want everything done in a specific way. Uh, well, let's say we are going for a program. So right, we are going for a program, right? And so once, like, once he tells you, did you take the books? Did you take the Maha Suites? Did you, you know, did you iron my clothes? Did you print out these printouts or something? So once he tells you, you know, do this, do this, do this. So the next time you come and ask him, Maharaj, should I always take the books when we go for the program? Yes, of course. Okay. This is must. About the closing, should I close? Should I are you close every day? No, I will tell you. Okay, he will tell me about the closing. Okay, so about Maha Suites, should I take always Maha Suites? Yes. Okay, I'll take the Maha Suites. Uh, printouts, is there like you know? Should I ask you about printouts? No, I will let you know. Okay, so then you are proactively following this until he changes this maybe with the time. So you are being trained by this way. If you start to speculate. You know, maybe Maharaj, this is what you, this is what actually the, the Western mind is all about speculation. Be creative, you know, be creative. We, you know, it's, it's a speculation. And then it's like, okay, maybe, maybe in this program, Maharaj would like a warm slippers. Then I will take a warm slippers. You know? And then it's like, Maharaj, what is we have in this bag? Warm slippers for you, Maharaj. And then for Rikhastas, he will be like, ah, okay. For me, he's like, no, <laughs> he will smash me, you know? Like he will like, why are you speculating? You know, but like for, but he will not. You know, if somebody comes at the he sees it like once a year. You know, it's like, oh, okay, thank you for this. You know, why not? You know? <laughs> but for a personal servant, he's like, don't speculate, just follow my orders. So in the sense, your question is, when do we start be proactive? We we are proactive in learning the instructions and applying the instructions. And then sometimes he will say, okay, we are going to this, you know, we're going to Kirtanite. You don't take the books in Kirtanite, you know, because it's not 
Well, Islam is broken. It's, it's kryptonite. So then you learn when to take, when not to take. When you are not sure, you ask Maharaj. So in this way, you're learning how to be proactive. It's not that you're just randomly doing it. Does it sense? Yes. Yes. Very clear. Thank you. That's why he said, like a personal servant, it needs a few years to train. So I was, I, I will, I kind of feel like um, I was, uh, I, I, I was feeling like, um, oh, I missed out that Janaki not trains me, Maharaj, because I was here when he was already feeling sick, so I couldn't, you know, couldn't have these possibilities. And when Maharaj came, I just, you know, I just jumped into it. So it would be much easier for me if somebody came and trained me and telling me like, no, you do this like that, do this to that, do this to that. So now we're just trying to make a document where we would write all these things down, how to serve, like what, what, you know, what's the preference of Maharaj and try to serve in this way. And this document will evolve if you like, you know, every time it will evolve more and more, but it will give us a guidance for like how to serve him better. So in this sense, so that, you know, all of us can be, you know, in some way, this person to serve. So if you also have some ideas what to put in this document, please contact me and I would uh, like to add your input. Yes. Any anything else like see what is? I can serve you. Oh, Shilpesh Prabhu has raised the hand. Go ahead, Prabhuji. Uh, this this is uh, I wanted to ask you actually, Dean and Prabhu, if you don't mind. Oh. But uh, you've been obviously around Maharaj for some time, and as a sort of grihasta, you've driven Maharaj, and uh, just wanted to hear your experiences, if you don't mind. So as a contrast to being a personal servant and being a griasta. Good question. <laughs> I've served very little Maharaj, um, wherever I had the opportunity, mostly to driving him at various places for programs and appointments and things like that. But I think, not what I think, not speculation, it's very important to understand the mood of the person that you are serving and you have to do that by observing, and that takes time. So you might be chastised once, and sometimes you do the same thing, and you know you might not get chastised. So you have to also understand the time of the day, what's the mood. And, and that's what I try to follow and observe. I don't get it right uh, many, of, many times, but then sometimes I do get it right as well, and then it, it gives me some satisfaction. So I think when we are with our spiritual masters, or senior devotees, uh, we should absorb in, a, in, a, in observing them, how they are conducting themselves, learn from it, because then we can serve them nicely. And many times, it, it's, it's very tempting. Um, for example, Maharaj is with me for sometimes one hour, two hours driving. It's very tempting to ask so many questions. And, but then I'm thinking that he needs to rest. Uh, I'm not thinking because he's also tired as well uh, and, you know, long programs and he's very compassionate to do so many things. I, I would not ask any questions, uh, although my mind says, you, know, you have to ask this, you know, this is the most personal association you're going to get. It's only you and Maharaj and we should ask. And so, so I do ask, but I look at the mood, look at what the situation is. And the most important thing is not my questions, it's about how can I serve him best? Uh, if he's tired, if he's you know, you know, if he's chanting, then you're just doing your service. Just focus. Make sure you're driving safely. So, yes, and that is important. So, because the mind many times tells us, or at least me, oh, you know, be be a little bit more selfish for yourself. But we have to look always in a, in a, in a servant position and 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 ask and so. So, so, for example, one of the things that I can share with Maharaj is Maharaj does not like for his door to be opened. Uh, he says, I'll open it. But then sometimes he would also expect as well, uh, in the sense that, you know, so if you open, he's, he'll be okay. But it's sometimes if you, okay, he will chastise. He says, I can do it. Don't, don't do it for me. So it, it, is, it is challenging. But I think this is where you learn and, and, and where you grow. And where your ego gets uh, crushed, which is which is the whole purpose of, of devotional life, and we should not act. And this is something that I think I I myself can contemplate not with Guru Maharaj, but 
but so many other devotees, we should always put ourselves as I, as a full number one, present ourselves as full number one to our spiritual masters, because the mind would always say that I know more, or oh, maybe I know more about this, or maybe I should. But if you present in, a, in that position, presenting full number one, then it is the best thing that you can do because it places yourself in, in, into a mood of humility um, at all times. So sorry, I, I, this is something um, that I can share from my services with Maharaj. And, uh, and I'm still trying, learning a lot. Uh, every, every service is different with new, new learning lessons. So thank you, Hare Krishna. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Prabhu. Really, really interesting. Best. Thank you. So, if uh, do, should we should we then conclude this uh, session yeah. for today? Um, if there's no further questions, yes, we can conclude. Uh, thank you very much. One chakal patarubhyascha kripa sindubhya eva cha patita anam pavane bio vaishnavebio namo namaha. Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Chaitanya Charita Amrita ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.